Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to Parafilosoph's channel for the top 13 new management simulation games that are coming out in 2021. My name is Amanda and I'm happy to be here and present all of these new games to you. This video is just a part of a playlist dedicated to new games coming out in 2021. Previous videos showcase 4X, turn-based and grand strategy games, as well as base building, RTS, and city building games, while in the next ones you'll get to see new tactical squad combat strategy games and more. The first game on our list needs no introduction as it has been dear to our hearts for many years. Evil Genius. It's the sequel that has been subtitled World Domination, and we all had hoped to play it in 2020, but alas, the developers from Rebellion have delayed it to the first half of 2021. The main premise of Evil Genius has remained unchanged. You build a spy-fi lair as a criminal mastermind and use your intelligence, minions, henchmen, and dastardly devices to try and take over the world, wrecking it in the process. Naturally, the forces of good will try to stop you and your plans from succeeding by sending their own agents from the forces of justice to infiltrate your lair and sabotage your doomsday devices. This is where new traps, henchmen, and defensive systems come into play and let you defend your lair from those pesky do-gooders. This sequel is planned to let players build a large and complex lair. Choose from a wide variety of potential objectives, employ many minions, research teams, and everything else an inventive criminal mastermind might wish for in his mission to rule the world. Now, if if the world isn't enough for you, let's move to the moon for this next game in which just surviving a day is a victory on its own. Dark Moon is being developed by Jujube SA as a science fiction representation of survival on a hostile lunar surface, but with a twist. That twist being that the sun, which we consider as a source of all life, has turned into a destroyer by unleashing massive storms like which were never before seen or expected. The player starts the game as a member of the engineering council sent by Moonshell to oversee the construction of a newly developed mining system on the moon. But storms change your plans into a race for survival, and the only safe area is on the dark side of the moon. To stay alive, you and the rest of your team must keep the mechaplex in working condition through mineral collection and production of prototype mechanical devices. This is a walking factory-sized mech onto which you can build new buildings, research new technologies inside it, and traverse the lunar planes. Each playthrough will be different due to unpredictable results of each location and event, which all have inherent randomness, and also because of the composition and personality traits of your team, which can be enlarged as you pick up more survivors along the way. This is quite a unique concept, and it's going to be really interesting to see how it turns out once we get to play it. This, however, is not the case with our next game, as you can already play a demo of the Rift Breaker on both Steam and GOG. This demo is actually a prologue, as it lets you learn what the game is and brings you into the story. And that story is a really cool one, featuring a female scientist commando inside an advanced mecha suit hopping from planet to planet using dimensional rift travel as she sets up new automated bases for humans to colonize those new worlds from. In essence, it's a brilliant mix of base building and survival with action RPG elements. The player gets to feel as an almighty superhero akin to Iron Man while also playing the long game of building complex bases, supply chains, and defensive gun emplacements and walls. Oh wait, did, did I not mention the hungry hordes of monstrous alien animals trying to eat you? My bad. The game features a mix of small, medium, and large alien animals who use horde tactics to invade, break, and eat everything you build on their planets. So besides the stationary weapons you can build, your mecha suit, named Mr. Riggs, has both weapons and abilities in which you can use against those animals. But killing these beasts is not empty work, as by collecting the samples of their bodies and rare resources they drop, you can develop new upgrades, weapons, and technologies to help you survive these dangerous and hostile planets. The Rift Breaker comes with features for interactive streaming, such as voting by the viewers about what they should throw next at the player, which should make this game quite interesting to watch and not just to play. This is something that our next game has in spades, as it's all about showing off your work to the world and amazing the masses with living specimens of extinct animals like the woolly mammoth or the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Prehistoric Kingdom is being developed by Blue Meridian, and it puts you in the shoes of a zoo manager who will never get to pet his charges, as they would gladly bite off his hand or swallow him whole, shoes and all. Just like a regular zoo, these animal titans need food, water, a place to sleep, potential mates to reproduce, and a lot of space to roam. This is exactly why the players will be able to create beautiful habitats using an array of powerful and creative tools to grow jungles, carve rivers, raise mountains across enormous playable areas to create the perfect park for living relics. This game also features a robust modular building tool for both staff and animal buildings, meaning that no two prehistoric zoos will ever look the same. Even the animals can be customized by discovering genetic material from all over the world, letting players tinker with their animal skins and hides. Keeping visitors safe and off the animal's menu will be a challenge into itself in Prehistoric Kingdom. 
Moving on from animals, how about we try managing some medieval villagers in the aptly named Going Medieval Colony Building Sim from the developers over at Foxy Voxel. This game has already given its future players a taste of its gameplay through several time-limited demos, and Peter has showcased one of these some time ago, but we should talk about the all-new additions to the game since then. As this game features some really cool and innovative building options for its genre, this system has been updated to allow for even more stacking of construction pieces both on top and beneath each other, making building massive wooden stone keeps easier and even more varied in all three axes. The combat system has also been upgraded to make the occasional attacks from raiders and slavers both more dangerous and interesting. The management interface for your villagers has been reworked, especially when it comes to the menu, which now makes it easier to customize villagers' clothing, armor, and weapons. Religion has also been added alongside its mechanics like praying and shrine construction, which play a part in villagers' overall mood and emotions. This simulation is quite deep in this regard, as villagers can receive specific debuffs from things like a bad meal or injuries, ranging from life-threatening trauma all the way down to the level of cuts. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, so expect more videos about this game on Peter's channel. And speaking of ice, this is going to be a precarious resource for all of the new players in this open world sandbox game about Mars colonization called Occupy Mars The Game. It's being developed by Pyramid Games as a highly technical and deep gameplay experience of the struggles of humankind and what they will face when attempting to build a permanent base and colony on the Red Planet. The main idea here is that players will get to build and upgrade their base from scratch, discover new regions through dangerous exploration, conducting mining operations, retrieving water, generating oxygen, growing crops, fixing broken parts on machines and vehicles, and learning how to survive on Mars. Where Occupy Mars goes one step further compared to similar games is the fact that players will have to face fixing broken parts using realistic electronic components and tools. They will have to learn the basics of SMD, soldering, using hot air, electronic measurement tools, and all the other tools and skills necessary to fix their equipment. For exploration, you will be able to use vehicles like the Rover, which can be upgraded in the garage and workshop, with a hydraulic crane, robotic arm, and more components suitable for all kinds of surface work. Since failure is always an option when dealing with technology and machines on an alien world, quick thinking and proper use of tools and materials can save you from injury or death, or to at least prevent a large-scale breakdown on the fledgling colony. Now let me remind you to hit that like button below if you've been enjoying this video, and tell me what was your favorite management sim of 2020 in the comments, and which strategy game are you looking forward to the most in 2021? This next game is also a science fiction space simulation, but on a much, much grander scale. Dyson Sphere Program is being developed by Youth Cat Studio and will let players build massive and efficient intergalactic factories across multiple solar systems. These factories will be automated once built, and each one will become just a link in a long chain of such factories, whose purpose is to contribute to the construction of giant spheres which will harness almost the entire energy output of the stars they are built around. These are called Dyson Spheres, as their concept was popularized by Freeman Dyson, but few know that they originally were the brainchild of Olaf Stapledon in his science fiction novel Star Maker from 1937. Literature aside, the reason why the player is building these is to power a new kind of supercomputer which features a superior artificial intelligence and computing capability, which are hoped to push humanity to the next level of development and technology. As the game world is an entire galaxy, you will travel to neutron stars, white dwarfs, red giants, gaseous and rocky planets, while setting up transport routes for materials from one place to another, forming interstellar transport teams. The key aspects of gameplay will be managing factory and production line layouts to achieve high efficiency, building and balancing power production and its distribution network, researching new technologies to improve your factories, and traveling through outer space in search of even more resources as the size of this construction project slowly sinks in. Now, I think it's time we take a break from the science fiction setting and drop the technology bar a few levels so we can get into much more of a classical setting. Pirate Commander is a survival sandbox manager being developed by Rock Game SA, which puts its players in the role of a pirate galley captain whose mission is to plunder, find treasures and loot, fight enemies, and terrifying sea monsters. The management gameplay is multi-leveled. There is a crew and their mental and physical health, morale, food, drinking water, medicine, weapons, and ammunition to take care of. Then, there is a ship and its equipment and structure to maintain and upgrade. On top of that, there is combat with management of its cannons, ship's mass, sails, speed, extinguishing fires, and so on. In addition, the game has a manual cannon aiming system, thanks to which the fights will be very satisfying and dynamic. New recruitment can be recruited at ports from defeating enemies among natives and dock sailors. This game features an open world full of marine mysteries and exotic islands. 
The good thing is, is that it also features several camera views and menus, which will make all of this management and combat much easier to execute. Games about pirates are rarely done well, and only a few have ever managed to stay relevant past their release year. I wish all the best to the developers and hope this one will be one of those rare successes. Anyway, let's go back to the science fiction setting for Mars City Builder. Now, don't get confused by its title, because the game isn't set far in the future on a civilized and terraformed Mars, but currently on a barren and hazardous reality. The developers from Dark Star Studio are placing the player in the role of a pioneer who has to fight for his every breath of oxygen and sip of water against the arid and almost airless deserts of Mars. From that first lander, a colony will grow and expand as its players develop the land and build roads, public transport, solar panels, fully automated homes and mineral mines using an army of rovers and droids. As you develop more advanced technology and terraforming techniques, you will enhance the quality of life on Mars for your colonists, making those futuristic cities on Mars that bit less of a dream and more of a realistic goal. Now if you thought making a colony base on a barren world was tough, wait until you play the next game on our list. Ill Space is being developed by Cool and Good Games, and it's all about a massive space station which is in danger from an invasive and aggressive alien disease. When starting this game, the player finds themselves on an interstellar long-haul logistics capital trade nexus. Ill for short. The year is 2298, and humanity is expanding at a rate higher than ever in all directions. The Ill Nexus is the largest and most populated hub of the Terran Alliance of Corporations, a self-governed and militarized industrial megacorp. So that was the storyline, but what about the gameplay? Well, the gameplay is based on management and survival with elements of RTS tower defense. In other words, it's complicated. Players will get to build, research, mine, trade, expand, and defend their space station from the mentioned alien infestation and the ever-present asteroids of all shapes and sizes. The station itself is highly modular and spans all three axes, but that just makes defending it a lot more difficult. That's why you get to build different cannons, lasers, and missile defense systems all over the station. The cool thing about this setup is that the building materials are all around you, and sometimes even hurtling towards you, as asteroids are rich in all kinds of materials. Research and energy are two other resources you will gain through building specialized modules, while you will still have to maintain your own crew and space station hull by being a responsible and efficient space station manager. Good luck to you, Commander! Going back to planet Earth, it's time to take a look at one of my favorites from this list, Mr. Prepper. This interesting one man's doomsday underground shelter simulation is being developed by Rejected Games and it features a mix of elements from a bunch of different games from its genre all mushed together in a surprisingly seemingly well-balanced gameplay experience. Its demo was available for players during Steam's Game Festival and it had a lot to show off. Mr. Prepper, your character in the game, is about being prepared for what he feels is the inevitable nuclear war and nuclear winter which would follow in its wake. You start off with just your home and your basement, but soon dig down and expand your future shelter with new rooms, equipments, machines, and even a farm. Trading with neighbors is a simple way of acquiring new items you need to move forward, or should I say down, but if they snitch on you and your little operation to the paranoid government, you might get an unpleasant visit from the secret police. The ultimate goal is to build and operate your own endgame device and change your future and fortune forever. Now for those of you who might like more of a vintage setting, this might just be what you're looking for. A World War II simulation game about the inner workings of a US Navy aircraft carrier as it carries out wartime missions called Aircraft Carrier Survival. This game is being developed by Creative Forge Games and it aims to show its players the harshness of the oceans and the cruelties of war all in one simulation of the merciless reality of World War II. In this game, players take control of the aircraft carrier, its crew, officers, and planes. The gameplay is based on proper management of equipment, crew, escorts, ship stations, and making the hard calls in difficult situations, often by choosing the lesser of two evils and worrying about the consequences of your decision later. The missions you are given will set up each encounter, and these will be a mix of aerial combat, naval engagements, and fights for bases and islands. Using the intel collected during recon missions, you can prepare pilots and aircrafts for large operations, while you as the commander will have the options of taking on the enemy directly, sneaking past them, or taking an alternate route to completely avoid contact. When you do inevitably enter into an engagement, your damage control teams will handle fire outbreaks, torpedo strikes, hull flooding, enemy bombardment, airstrikes, and suicide attacks from enemy planes, but only one at a time. It will be your call to make as to which threats need to be dealt with first in order to survive. To avoid these situations, it is best to use maneuvers, aircraft, 
anti-aircraft turrets, and whatever else you can to survive enemy attack without damage, but also to send them to the bottom of the ocean. Now for the final game of this list, it's only fitting to finish it off with a science fiction game set in the depths of outer space. Age of Space is a combination of real-time resource management and tactical combat being developed by PodPal Games. Its setting is limited to our own solar system and an already brewing war between the Martians and the UEA, which is short for the United Earth Alliance. You play as a mercenary who is unable to prevent being inevitably dragged into this conflict, which the Martians are calling a liberation war and are left with only choosing a side. You get to grow your power as you fight in incredibly atmospheric and visually stunning 3D battles for the control of the solar system. But besides these battles, the management side of the game is about building and expanding your mining outpost as you gather the necessary resources in real time. You also unlock new and unknown technologies salvaged from the wreckage of your enemies, customize and build massive warships in your shipyard, and finally, nudge the balance of war by accepting missions from your star map for one side or the other. But besides all that, would it really be a space age game if you didn't get to fight pirates for fame or riches, or even become an outlaw yourself, winning the war in favor for a third side, your vanity? And if you want to show off your fleets of customized ships and leveled up captains, go into the co-op and have a merry space day blowing up everything from tactical cruisers to motherships with weapons ranging from cannons and missiles to lasers and tactical nukes. All these spaceships come in different sizes and fill different roles and purposes. They also have unique bonuses that you can exploit in order to get the most out of your ship. Spaceships in Age of Space will have set properties and three different sets of hardpoints where you can install modules and weapons. These can be passive modules, which boost primary attributes of the ships, active modules, which are the backbone of your weapons and are available all of the time, while the tactical modules are the most impactful tactical weapons that can change the tide at any battle, but require high amounts of energy to use. This all sounds great, and I know Peter can't wait to dig into this game day one, so expect plenty of videos on his channel about Age of Space once it's finally out. And with that, we end this list, my fellow gamers. I hope you enjoyed this rundown of 13 upcoming new management simulation games for 2021. More videos are on the way, and they will be posted here as cards on the screen. If you enjoyed my voice and presentation, I invite you to check out my channel where I do a variety of videos, including commentary. Link is in the description. Thank you for watching, and happy gaming!